Hey everybody, so Heidi here with Successful Fashion Designer, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of Adobe Illustrator on the iPad for fashion. We're gonna go through some of the essential tools and how it works in comparison to the desktop version. Now, this just came out a couple weeks ago, and it's a pretty exciting release because it's the first time that the software has jumped devices from the desktop or laptop to a tablet. So it's pretty exciting and I'm really, really thrilled to show you guys what the software can do. Now that being said, make sure to stay to the end because I'm gonna share with you my opinion on whether or not you need to know this in addition to the desktop for working in fashion, whether or not you can get away with using the iPad exclusively for working in fashion and not using this desktop version at all, and just in general what my thoughts are on the software. Now, before we dive in, let me just give you a heads up on the tools I'm using. I'm using a generic pencil. I bought it on Amazon for about $25. I'll link to it below. I opted for this instead of the Apple Pencil, which runs about 100 because I'm not a big hand sketcher and I don't anticipate using this tool a lot. Therefore, I decided to save some money and get the cheaper version of the pencil. So far, it works pretty well. I don't think I can give a fair review on it because I've not used the Apple Pencil and I don't think I've used this one enough to share my opinion. It was recommended from some designers in the successful fashion designer community, so I went ahead and took a gamble on it. The reviews on Amazon were good, and so far, I'm pleased. Also, as far as the iPad goes, I'm using our family iPad, which we just use to watch TV. It's an older version, it's the sixth generation. It's the 9.7 inch screen, and it's a great iPad, but it's definitely older. It's not one of the really fancy new big ones, so just so you know, you don't need one of the fancy new ones to use Illustrator on the iPad. All right, now let's jump into the video. All right, so let's take a look first at the workspace and what it is that we have to work with. So we have our tools over on the left-hand side, and panels and sort of our menu options over on the right hand side. So I say menu options because we don't have the typical drop down that we see in the desktop version. It's all kind of tucked over here. Um, and some of these are directly sort of identical to what we see in the desktop version. Some of them work a little bit differently. I'm not gonna go through every tool in this tutorial. I'm gonna do a general overview and we'll do some basic drawing like we would do in fashion and we'll touch on some other tools in some future tutorials. So just to do a quick overview, we've got our selection tools right here at the top, selection and direct selection. We've got our pen tool, we have pencil, and we also have the blob brush, which we do see on the desktop as well, an eraser, which works very intuitively. I love the way the eraser tool operates in this iPad for iPad version. Um, we've got our basic shapes that we see on the desktop as well, type, artboards and we can bring in photos from our camera roll or the internet. So that's nice if we wanna trace anything or have some inspiration on our layout. Over on the right hand side, we've got some settings and some help and the option to save. We have undo and redo at the top here. We also have layers like we would normally see in Illustrator and it does automatically do layers for everything that you draw just like you would see on the desktop. So that's great. We have properties depending on what artwork you have selected, the properties uh, details here will change. We have the option for our grid and guides. We also have a very great shape builder slash pathfinder tool. It's kind of similar to how both of those work on the desktop version. It gives a preview. I'm going to show you that. This works really, really well. I'm very excited about how they did this, and I actually hope they transfer some of the functionality over to the desktop version. We have our cut and our eyedropper tools, alignment, Object expand, so this is sort of, we're used to seeing this at the top, right? Object expand, object group. So this is sort of the drop down, but it's over here kind of as a panel. Um, we also have our type options, our path options, and our repeat options. These are very, very cool. Some stuff that we don't see in the desktop that I really love how these work. We'll go through a little bit of this today. So let's dive in and start drawing. And I'm gonna start drawing a basic placket with some buttons, something very simple but technical that we would see in the workspace within uh, our normal day-to-day -day in fashion. And so a couple things, right, this works very normally how we would work on a touch screen for a pinch to zoom, so on and so forth. You also may notice this little circle here, and I'm going to tell you what that is. I actually was not sure what it was when I first started playing around with the software, and what it is is the shift key or the option and alt key, so it's your modifier key that you would normally have on a keyboard. So let's take a look at what that means. As I draw my circle, right, I can draw this sort of ovally in whatever way that I want. I can hold the shift key to constrain the proportion, so that is nice. Beyond that, 
if I'm resizing again and I want to maintain the proportions, constrain it, I hold the shift key. If I slide out to that sort of second bubble, it's the option or alt key which allows me to scale from the center. So depending on what tool I'm using and what uh, what tool I'm using and what the artwork is, the function of this key will change. This is also cool because we can move this around depending on whether you're right or left-handed or what direction that you're working in. So I really, really like that. Um, this is nice. I don't have an external keyboard for the iPad because I don't use my iPad in that way. But if you had an external keyboard, then you know perhaps this wouldn't be as useful, but that's what that is for. So we have our basic circle drawn for our button. And now let's go ahead and draw our buttonholes. And I'm gonna do these off to the side. And I'm gonna just click and drag to draw my buttonhole. I'm gonna hold the shift key so that constrains the proportion. Now instead of copying and pasting this and making four buttonholes, I'm gonna use the radial repeat, which is super cool and powerful. This is not something we see on the desktop as of now. Um, again, this is very early in the release of the Illustrator for iPad. It's only been out a couple weeks. So depending on when you're watching this, the, some of these features may have changed, um, but I'm gonna choose my radial repeat. And let's just move this over so we can see a little bit better. A couple things we have in here is this slider here, which determines how far around the radius they actually repeat. So we can have it only repeat around half, or we can have it repeat around the entire radius. You have a slider on the right here, which shows uh, which allows us to adjust the number of objects that repeat on the radius. So very, very cool. I will just show you one cool thing here. This effect can be stacked, meaning I can now take this circular repeat and I can make another repeat, another circular repeat out of that. How cool is that? Um, and I just did this with a basic circle, right? You can start to draw all sorts of really cool artwork and really kind of go to town with this. I'm gonna undo some of that and I'll show you a cool shortcut to undo. Two fingers, double tap. Undo, 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 whoops, undo. Three fingers, double tap is a redo. So we do have this up here, undo and redo, but it's a little faster, uh, arguably, I don't know, six of one, half dozen of the other. But for me, I kind of like the double tap on the screen and it's just a little bit more of the touch screen interface and experience if that's what you like. So let's drop the number of circles here down quite a bit. We only need four for our button and they came out a little big, so I'm gonna make those a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of those just for demonstration purposes because the next thing that I'm gonna do, we're gonna wanna see those as a different color. So I'll bring those in the center. Now, as we know in real life, those buttonholes would be cut out of the button. And so we wanna do that and we wanna do it accurately. Um, and what I mean by accurately is one way you can do it is you could just change these to white. But the problem is when we add a placket or if we put a shirt behind this or whatever garment, and let's give our placket a color. Whoops. Redo, okay. Um, I think I might have double tapped on the screen to do the undo perhaps, whoops, okay. You guys, I'm still learning. So <laughs> I've probably played with this for about an hour total. So I'm definitely still fumbling around a little bit. It has been fairly intuitive, um, but I'm still making mistakes. So I will draw my placket and I wanna show you this menu at the bottom, which we haven't looked at. But when you have an object and it's selected, and I'm just gonna select it with the selection tool. There we go, come on, okay. This panel at the bottom comes up, this menu of options. And so there's a couple cool things in here. One, we have opacity, and we can tap and, tap and drag to change the opacity. Now you literally just tap on this and you drag. So I just tapped on the, swap, uh, the stroke option and I just tap and drag. Now I can tap and get this little slider open and that works just fine, but I can just literally tap and drag. This is very cool, very quick, easy interface to change um, any of the various settings within your artwork. This is our stacking order. So sort of object arranged, sent to front, sent to back, so on and so forth. So if I wanted to bring this to the front, I would drag up. If I wanna bring it to the back, I drag down. Now there's only two objects, so it's just dragging down under the button, but still that's very, very nice. Um, this is acts as the selector. This locks and unlocks it. If you lock it, you just come up here to press the unlock in the corner. You can also lock this using the layers panel. 
um, as we use on the desktop that we're very used to. Uh, and beyond that, we have the option to duplicate. I'm gonna trash that and then trash, that's the last one. So as I was talking about earlier with the buttonholes as white, all of a sudden this is not very realistic, right? So we do wanna cut these out of our actual button. So I'm gonna select those buttonholes. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna select my button. I'm gonna come over to the shape builder, not that one, whoops, shape builder. Now this is grayed out and it's not letting me do anything. Why is that? And the reason is because this is still a radial repeat, meaning I still have the ability to edit this as a repeat. So it's sort of a live dynamic effect that's still attached to that radial repeat, which is, what we want to use our object menu for, right? Object expand, which will break that apart from that repeat, meaning we'll no longer be able to adjust the number of holes around the radial repeat, but that's fine. We don't need to because we just need the four holes for the button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click expand, and now we have four individual button holes. From here, I'll hold the shift key and grab my button itself. And this is a really cool feature that I love, the shape builder tool. Um, also, it looks exactly like the Pathfinder. Um, to me, it's a little more Pathfinder than Shape Builder based on the terminology, but that's okay. It still works really, really well for what we wanna do. I love the preview that it gives you for what you're gonna get. This is beautiful. I hope they actually bring this to the desktop. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose minus front, which is gonna cut those holes out. Now we have an accurate drawn button that is actually see-through holes. So very, very cool and powerful. We will zoom out a little bit and I'll make a copy of this drag it down, make another copy, drag it down, whoops. There we go, all right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this, hold the shift key to deselect the placket, come over to my align panel, make sure those are aligned, make sure those are distributed, and we've got our three buttons and our placket. And then to add stitching, um, there's not a ton of support right now, or I shouldn't even say that, there's just not the feature for object path, offset path, so we're just gonna manually wing our stitching, which is fine, it'll be close enough. I'm gonna take off the fill color, and I'm gonna grab my stroke, which is fine, and I want to come over to, is it in my properties? No, you know what, we'll just draw it first, and then we'll change it to a dash. So I'm just gonna kinda of wing it and it's just a little bit, whoops, I wanted to be a little bit closer at the top. All right, so from here you can see now our properties panel has the various settings and attributes that we would wanna use for our stroke. We have to slide down and there they are. We can change it to a uh, dashed line and we can adjust our dash and our gap. Right now the stroke looks quite thick, so let's go ahead and drop that down to maybe one. I think that looks much better. I do also, for all of my stitching, like to do a round corner and a round uh, butt here because it just softens that a little bit. That's the same feature that we do see on the desktop as well. Okay, so there was your overview of Illustrator on the iPad. What do I personally think of the software? I'm actually impressed with what they've done. It is more robust and more powerful than I anticipated it being. This is the first release, so there are gonna be a lot of new enhancements and features added over the coming months and years, of course. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. That being said, do I think you can use it in replacement of the desktop version for working professionally in fashion. I absolutely do not think that you can. I think we still very, very much need the desktop version. There's a couple reasons for this. One, I just think that some of the technical and structured drawings and artwork that we need to do, the tools on the desktop and the desktop interface I feel are a little bit stronger and more robust to do that sort of artwork and design. Additionally, there are some fundamental tools that are completely missing on the iPad version. Now, those are things like brushes, so there's no way to do zippers or uh, complex stitching and things of that sort, which is something that we really rely heavily on in fashion. Another feature is making colorways, which we didn't go into in this video, but the live color feature on the desktop, there's nothing like that on the iPad version, so there's no way to really make colorways and do mock-ups quickly. They are saying that enhanced brush support is coming. They haven't mentioned anything about colorways, but I'm sure that over the months and the years, new features will be released. So depending on when you're watching this, it might be, a uh, little bit outdated compared to what the software actually offers. 
That being said, I don't think it can replace the desktop version. Do you need to know it in addition to the desktop version to work professionally in fashion? I actually don't think so either. Um, I think that if you're a hand sketcher and you really like to design by hand, if your sketches lean more illustrative uh, for whatever reason, you do those for presentations or maybe you are actually a fashion illustrator, which is a completely different job than working in fashion design on a production level where our drawings tend to be a little bit more structured and technical for factories to read them. Um, for illustrative work, I think the iPad has a place. If you do sort of print design and repeating pattern design that is a little bit more artistic and you like to work by hand, then I think that the iPad can be a great tool to enhance your desktop experience, but I don't think we're anywhere near it replacing it nor it being a requirement to be known for working professionally in the fashion industry. The tool is expensive for brands to adopt. So brands, if they wanted to require you to know the software, then they have to buy iPads, they have to buy pencils. And I just don't see that as a place where they are gonna be putting their dollars. So personally, I don't think you need to know it. I don't think it's gonna replace the software anytime soon on the desktop. That being said, overall, I am really pleased with the software and what they've done. It's again, like I said at the beginning, more robust than I anticipated it being. And if you're a hand sketcher, I think it's a great add-on supplement to the desktop experience. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. I'm gonna be releasing new tutorials on drawing fashion flats and doing repeating patterns and showing you some of the more robust tools for Illustrator on the iPad. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And if you're not already, sign up for my email list at SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com where I share tons of tips, tutorials, and freebies that you don't see here on YouTube.